Hello, welcome to the Painting with Commentary video for the Icon of the Realms repaint of Tiamat, featured in Paint to Life episode 22. If you missed the episode, you can find the link here or in the description below, so go ahead and check that out. So to start with, I took the model and I primed it with the Citadel Chaos Black. Um, just like Bahamut before this, I did not strip the paint, I simply used the black primer right on top because this is a very fine primer and the paint on the original was very th uh, thin it did not need to come off before being repainted so being Tiamat this is um, probably one of the most complicated paint jobs I ever had to do <laughs> on paint to life in that I used I don't know 36 different paints my goal here when I decided I was going to end my dragon series with Tiamat was that since I painted all the chromatics and I painted all the metallics to do their gods respectively would be a nice bookend to the five metallics and five chromatics. Now I'm starting with a corn red base coat with Citadel corn red. It's a very deep red. I've used it before on um, Zeriel. I used it on uh, my Baylor. I used it on Diablo. And if you've used corn red before you know it dries is very dark. You can see here it looks pretty red but it will dry much darker than that. So I use corn red everywhere, obviously not the heads themselves, because that's where it gets complicated. Each one of these heads I had painted a certain way from each of the Paint the Life videos I had painted for each of the respective chromatic dragons. So I had to go back in history to find out what colors I had used for the dragons. And actually my own videos were helpful for that <laughs> these painting with commentary videos to remind me which colors I I used so that I could recreate them um, you can see here I've left the tapes the tips of the wings I didn't run the red all the way down the original icons um, mini that I'm painting over had much more black uh, it went halfway up the wing frill and in this case I didn't want that much um, but I learned my lesson using um, Baelreich, the red dragon. I had gone up way too high and too dark with black. So this time I just left the primer exposed like this with a little bit of um, dry brushing slash stippling near it to make it, uh, you know, see I went right down to the tip and I think I'm gonna touch that up later if I recall. That looks much cooler in my opinion than the way the wizards, uh, WizKids um, model you know the pre-painted it's more than halfway and it's too dark too much black so I like the way this works and you know you have a primer it's a nice flat flat like black like that with great coverage use it so that's what I did so anyways I'm not gonna paint the heads obviously because I know that I'm gonna have to paint each one of them their respective color with the exception of the main central head which is red I am I am gonna paint that I'm not sure if I kept that on film or not um, and it's going to also take a lot more Mephiston red later because I didn't want it. I wanted it to stand out from the body. Um, fun fact: I did take this miniature with me to my D and D group on Sunday, and we played. And Tiamat made an, uh, an appearance in Avernus. The group was wrapping up in Avernus, and she showed up. And it was really something to put this finished thing on the table, as well as Gazaloth, the Baylor, as well as Zeriel. You know all these. I painted on Paint to Life. It was really cool. So miniature painting, great hobby we have, folks. If you are playing Dungeons and Dragons, you have these miniatures. You know, take them, paint them, and even if your paint jobs, like my paint job, compared to others, is nothing. You know, there's always someone who's going to be better than you, and you're always going to be better than someone else. At the end of the day, though, just by painting them, you've made them truly come to life, and that's your players will appreciate it. <laughs> and I read someone's post today that the more time he takes on a miniature to paint it, the, the more fearful the players are when they see it <laughs> come out to the table because they know it's going to have a lot of health. <laughs> it's kind of cute. So you can see I did paint the middle of the five heads um, with the corn red. And see the, it's dried there and it's much less red than it had appeared. So now up the belly with the uh, uh, Ushab... Oh boy. Ushabti? Bone? No, whatever that was. Um, it's a cool bone color, a little more beige than some of the other bone colors that I'm going to use, like Morgast, which is a little bit more um, yellow. B 
because I'm going to be using that on the Black Dragon's chest, I didn't want it to be the same. Even though the Black Dragon and even the Red Dragon, oh, he gets it all the way up. The Red Dragon head in the middle, she gets the this bone, but the Black Dragon, I want it to be different. So I picked this color. Again, can't really go wrong with beiges. Just take your time on the... Um, the uh, you know in the crotch regions make sure you don't clip anything and if you do you can just touch it up another thing I'll say about this model and this paint I found this very difficult because this model was so big the biggest I've ever painted you might not notice it in this angle but it's very high it's very close to my camera I had a hard time photography uh, photographing this miniature as well I'm you know I'm taking pictures for the final shots and with my camera boy the heads have so much depth to them right that where's your focal point without putting the other heads blurry so I tried my best to capture it all and you know it was difficult to photograph this mini just as much as difficult to, to film it while I was painting it so as you see I'm struggling here moving my camera up it's getting closer my hand it was in the way so not everything on this mini that I painted made it into the finished video which I apologize for but by the same token it was mostly the dragon heads themselves and what that means is let's say you want more details I, I know for a fact I didn't get the white dragon head I got his his scales to his chest scales but not his back well I know his back if you go look at the uh, painting the white dragon from episode I don't know Glacius episode on paint the life the painting with commentary video of Glacius you can watch that and that's how I painted the head you know obviously sans the wings and the base and whatnot so we run down her body and now we're going to put in her wing skin area. This is a Bugman's Glow. I didn't want to go with a yellow, um, like a Bellrike had a yellow wing. Bugman's Glow, oh look and I painted over that nice black. I think I thought maybe I wouldn't do it on the inside. I might have added it in later at the end, I can't recall. Uh, other fun fact, I usually record these on Sunday or Monday and I have finished painting usually the previous Wednesday. So it's been a while since I've uh, actually did this in real time, but you know we all always compare it to the finished model to see. But obviously I did paint it over. You know what? She is right behind me. Let's see, just look, you lazy bones. Yeah, I put it back. <laughs> I just pulled the model out of my uh, box. As I said, I took it to D&D &D on Sunday. And I definitely painted it back on there. So could have saved myself a step. So we're on to blue, techless blue which is what we painted the dragon head. And you can see this Barrack Nar Burgundy. Wherever, one of the big beefs I had with the original painting was the transitions were very just like snipped, snipped on. So where blue and red make purple, I used Burgundy to merge the two for the blue. And that was the easiest one to transition. And I'll touch it up later. Uh, Seborite Green. Again, if we look at Mobius in his episode, he was episode three. Uh, these were the colors I painted Mobius. I wanted each of these five heads to be just like the painting of the episodes in question. And again, this is where it was really tricky for me to angle it to show you guys stuff for my own sake and to get in there, um, given how big the dang model was. So, um, so here we go with Mobius. And I'm using that red. You can see I'm trying to blend the, blend the wet green and the wet red around the base for a nice transition very difficult to see but in the finished product it's a little bit of both instead of being a, a harsh line where the two paints meet it is a little bit more blended which is what I was happy to do and that's one of the main reasons I took on this project you can see there Let's mix it up a bit so it's not so stark uh, so Oregon Ogren Ogren camo was under Raylan Raylan the blue dragon that was his uh, neck scales um, you know, this also after painting uh, Bahamut last week, and he was such a difference. I mean, the original WizKids Bahamut dragon, it looks, you know, navy and black, and it's a platinum dragon. No way. So when we finished that one last week, I was so happy, and you, most of the comments I got were so impressed with how what a transition it was. Um, this one, not so much. And let's be honest, I'm really just painting it the same colors it already was, but more true Elysian Green here for Mobius's neck. Um, a little more true to my other dragons, that's all. So it's not as big of a shock, uh, which we'll see in the finished product. Which also explains why I didn't get as much uh, social media reaction. Normally when I post these dragons or my, my work, 
you know, I get pretty good uh, reaction, but this one wasn't so obvious. So Rust Gray goes, now this is the White Dragon. So you can see we have the Rust Gray. I'm going to put it down there. And on his back, I, I think we used the, um, I can't recall. Sorry. But it was in Moby, it was in Glacius's episode. I followed the same color scheme that I used for Glacius. I just didn't capture it on film because struggling with this beast in the camera. Um, oh, fun fact, you can see I've dry brushed some black on the wings under the underbelly there. Uh, so more gas bone under the black dragon's head. So if you look at the wing, see I dry brushed black on that and I was like on the Bugman's glow on Tiamat's wing flaps and I did not like it as I'm holding it here knowing full well that I'm going to have to paint over it because I didn't like it at all it's not doesn't look good looks dirty doesn't look singed doesn't look charred does it looks dirty like someone with grease on their hands was handling it okay this was I did like the way this turned out this is blood for the blood god citadel technical paint if you've ever used it I mean look at it, it looks like I just bled on the damn thing blood for the blood god is an extremely um cool looking paint and that when it dries it looks like real blood it's one of those go-to paints you'll always see people even if you don't like citadel's paints and you prefer other ones army painter get yourself some blood of the blood blood for the blood god um for that now check this out this is a technical storm shield what it is is it's a matte it comes from citadel it, it's a matte varnish the problem is i love the crimson color the blood for the blood god made very nice and um brilliant but it dries super glossy and too glossy. So I use this storm shield, I goop that shit all over everywhere. And when it dries, it will cut that gloss that the blood has. And we'll see it as I flip it around. So that's what I did for her wings. I was very happy with the way her back turned out. We'll see that in the finished shot. Now we have Mephist in red, fire engine red, you know, just like Diablo. On top of that corn red, it, it goes on really bright and looks like, holy smokes, look at that red, right? Except that it dries darker as well and it blends perfectly with corn and makes a really cool uh, two-tone effect. You can see I've also done all of her, her claws in Morgas Bone. I didn't film that, but all those little claws and the little elbow claws and the, I think I teeth, I put all the teeth on the dragons. Um, with more gas bone, it was more gas bone all over the place. So Mephist in red goes all over. I'm doing the plates. You know, I like to paint the plates of armor plates on the dragon. See down the toes and up the shin and on the thigh, and then I'll just kind of apply it on the shoulder on the shoulders as well, rolling down the wings a bit. But right now we're just still on the feet. I know her tail stinger is going to get a, a zap of it too. Here we go. It's on top of the. This is it's like a wet dry brush, right? So it's like a it's a layer is what it is. I'm just putting it high up close to the tail, not down to the bottom. And then I'm kind of using all my paint off my brush. And when my brush is almost empty, then I'm like, it's got a dry brush effect. See, I'm painting all over. It's I'm effectively dry brushing right now. I paint it when it's wet. I put it where the areas I want it to be. And when my brush runs out of paint, I use it to wipe it, the remnants everywhere else like a dry brush, just so that it gives a layer effect and you're effectively dry brushing. And you can see the bottom of the wing there, the Bugman's glow has been restored and all that black stuff is gone. Now, Evil Sun Scarlet, this is up her flanks, uh, those tail, those spikes on her back, there they go. Um, Evil Sun Scarlet is a very, or uh, it's like a, an orangey kind of red. So just wanted to give another element of red. And I also touched that up with um, Blood Angel's contrast paint on top of that which we don't see. So this is a kind of a throwaway. I use Nurgle's Rot inside more, the green dragon's mouth. See, I put silver inside them first. This is the new Talisar uh, Glow technical paint. So that's the acid inside the black dragon's mouth. Inside the red dragon, uh, blue dragon's mouth, that's a null oxide. Okay, that gives that kind of cool cyan glow. Uh, inside the red dragon's mouth, I have Amianian yellow contrast paint, and in the blue dragon's paint, I in the blue dragon's mouth, I put the um, uh, the blue gem paint from Citadel Technical Paint. Okay, so that's how I got the breath effects. To each breath, each open mouth should dry and look like it has a breath coming out. Now, on top of this Bugman's Glow, better than that crap dry brush, and you can see I've re-added the black because I realized it should be there. This is just Agrax Earthshade. You know, Null Oil would have also probably worked, 
but um, because these are reds, I didn't want to add black. I thought I'd pull some of the brown in, which would just, I don't know, complement it. It gives it more of a leathery kind of look, in my opinion, as opposed to a charred blackened look. So get that uh, Agarax Earthshade and all the um, little crevices just to highlight some of those scales. All right, now onto the base. So we're going to do a lava base. So we start with some nice pieces of tree bark. Get your drill. Don't drill through your fingers. Here we go. Get drilled, son. Look at that. All right. Now that hole I'm drilling in the center of this bark is going to be for the riser that comes up out of it. So start with, I found some pieces of box. There it is. I'm just testing the fit. Yeah, that's good. I have the pieces. I'm going to start with the troll slayer orange. So I want to do a lava effect with a crackle, a black crackle paint. So I don't want to do Zerial lava where it's just orange, yellow, you know, orange, red, yellows and stuff. I want to make that effect, but cover it with Mordant Earth, which we'll see, which when it dries, it cracks. Like I call it the Dairy Queen paint, like the chocolate sauce, it cracks. So lots of coats of Troll Slayer Orange. I don't want any of the black underneath coming through. So you get a nice orange base to start with. And then I'm going to block on my rocks, which are, as you know, are bark. Um, which I've paint I've uh, primed with the uh, chaos black spray paint. Um, so I marked them on there with pencil. You can't really see, but I'm starting with evil sun scarlet. So once I put the rocks on, I marked pencil. And now I'm painting the edges. Obviously, I don't have to paint underneath them because the rocks will cover that. So I'm painting out the area because the closer you are to the solid rock, the cooler the lava will be. And I know that that's where those rocks are going to go, those pieces of bark, and everywhere outside of that <clears throat> is going to be yellow and orange. So I'm just going to build out, you know, I'm thinning that paint because it's on there a little globby. It's mixing it up a bit, and while it's wet, I'm just going to keep adding the other colors. So we start with Troll Slayer, uh, Evil Sun Scarlet first. Next, we did Troll Slayer Orange, was already down there as the base. So here's um, more. I'm leaning forward trying to find out what that paint is. Yeah, guys, I'm going to show you in a mark right here. Just take a look at how many paints I used in this project. I'm linking the picture up on this video right now. I got to this editing point. I'm like, holy, I'm going to write out all these paints. Like, I, I, Some of them I used for like teeny little spots, right? Each dragon had seven paints on them. So I figured I'd just direct you back to the appropriate dragon video. So now as you can see back on our base, we're Fire Dragon Bright. Um, blending it in with the Troll Slayer Orange that's already there and the Evil Sun Scarlet. And then we're going to use some Flash Glitz Yellow. And your typical Lava Fair. I like lava. I find it's fun because it's the most um, literal. I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't do it like the pros. I just like, I like slopping it on there when it's wet. It's a really cool effect as the paint swirl. And you can kind of and because they all mix together into even more. You don't want to do it too hard because then you'll get a big soupy orange mess. But if you just do it just right and play with it, you'll get a cool little swirl, little transition. But put lots of yellows on here, lots of bright colors, because once the goop more than earth goes on and dries, you want to make sure that it pops. So we're going to take our Dawnstone dry brush. Okay. And on that, those black pieces of tree bark, nice and then for a little bit of osl objective source lighting i'm also going to use some riza rust and some i don't know what the yellow one's called off the top of my head but it's going to come up there is riza rust just around the base this gives that little just no, don't go too high because you don't want to uh hexos pale sun that's the other color so a little bit of heal a little bit of those two on there i think it's a cool little glowing effect and then um, some light, well, we'll see. Okay, I'm putting a little bit of Dorn Yellow on there in the hottest parts of the lava, just like I like to do. Must have filmed this out, or I think I was jumping back and forth between the pieces. Okay, so this bark has cool little indentations in it, and that's why I love using bark as rocks. So I get some tufts out, some of that... Um, cool different colors of uh, moss that you might have you know you don't want green because this is in like hell or a vernus so i wanted it to be 
white glue tasty <laughs> use some of the yellows and the browns the dried out bush looking effect or my son thought it looked like coral but you know whatever various tufts and mosses you can never go wrong with basing just have fun with it man you know tell me the last person you've met that can tell you what hell looks like you know nobody so you know just let your imagination run wild and because they have those little tough like that little hole i was able to pound the shit at pound the shit out of them tuck them in that little hole and here are scorched tufts from army painter those are cool if there's a little spot where there's a flat there you go add one there add one here wherever whatever floats your boat right but it's good to do this when you have the pieces not glued on the base because you have full access to them without having to worry about them being glued down and locked on right so a little pva glue to keep them in place and since I have those crevices, I use the end of my paintbrush to kind of jam them in. See? Squish it down there. Hold it for a second to dry. And now we have the mordant earth that I was telling you about. You can see, oh, also I super gloss that. See how shiny it is? Because I want it to come through. So get some enamel gloss um, spray. I use one from, um, hold on, I'm going to go get it. And I'm back with my Krylon Clear Glaze, triple thick crystal clear glaze. Put that on there because when this paint dries, this Morden Earth, it's going to crack and I, see how shiny it is. I really wanted it to show through and be light. So put that on there and let's see how it all looks. Here's the original mini factory painted. Um, you can see those rough transition lines at the base of each of the heads. I mean, it's not a terrible mini, don't get me wrong, I didn't say. Look at the black up the wing more than halfway. And here's our finished dragon. Much more colorful. The base looks sick. Uh, the black doesn't go nearly as far up the wing. Uh, this picture's a little out of focus. I was telling you I was having a hard time capturing it. Um, I put some Egret's Earthshade on all of her fingernails and claws. Let's get a different angle of her, maybe the head on, yeah. See the crackle paint at the base, that lava paint that we did with the crackle paint. It pops through, looks like cool lava, those bushes, or as my son says, corals. All right. Uh, the horn of the blue dragon, all their breaths are in their mouths. A little bit of touch up here and there. Just keep your lines. You can see the black dragon's chest, the different colors. There's ogren camo and the mordant bone, which was different from the ushabi bone. And therefore, they're all different. And you can see where I tried to blend the colors together and gradient them up. All in all, very fun project to paint. I am happy with the result. Her back is coming now. There's that Blood for the Blood God Red. Very, very cool color there. And um, still not nearly as glossy as it would have been if I hadn't used that Storm Shield technical paint. That's all I have for this, guys. If you have any other questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I look forward to painting with you again next Saturday on Paint to Life. And we will talk to you later. It's JMA Tang. Peace.